Welcome back to Firestorm Games and another video guide on how you can quickly paint your miniatures. However, in this video, instead of just focusing on a single miniature, we're instead going to be sharing some tips on how you can go about assembling and also painting up a larger force of miniatures relatively quickly. And we'll be using the newly released Caradron Overlord Start Collecting Set to do so. Before we can begin painting our miniatures, we first of all need to select a paint scheme and we need to keep in mind at least two criteria when choosing our scheme. The first one of these is to make sure that we have as fewer paints required as possible. We want to be able to paint this very quickly and the more paints we need to apply, the longer things will take. A second point which will help us to speed up the painting process is to choose colours which have in existence a Games Workshop spray paint. Basically, we want to be able to paint some large areas of the miniatures very quickly using the spray paint, which will again save a lot more time than painting it with a brush. Now luckily for us, the Caradron Overlords have a perfect paint scheme which hits both of these criteria, and that is for the Barak Zilfin scheme. They have fairly simplistic colours, they have a blue, a gold, a silver and a black, and those colours are actually represented in spray cans. We've got lead belts here, we've got retributor armour, we've got the fang, and we've also got the black spray paint as well. So we're going to be painting our miniatures in this particular scheme. Once we've chosen our scheme, we can now start working on sub-assembling our miniatures. Now these sub-assemblies should be based on their colour that we'll be painting them ultimately, and we want to basically block out the colours on these large areas very quickly with our spray paint. So as you can see here, I've got my gun hauler, I've kept a few areas separate, and they're all going to be painted, at least base coated, in the same colour. And this can be done not only to the larger vehicles, but also the smaller units such as these Grunstock Thunderers as well. Now you may have noticed that I've actually glued many of these components to either wooden dowels or lollipop sticks and this is basically so that I can get a better hold of them when I come to paint them both with a brush and also with the spray paint as well. With our sub-assemblies completed we can now start about priming and base coating our miniatures. Here in front of me I have some of the components which I've primed and also applied their base colour to as well using one of those spray cans. So the first thing I have is the Grunstock Gun Haulers Hull which has been uh, base coated using the Fang spray paint. On the right here I have my engine master, the ether engines and also the Grunstock Thunderer Sergeants and finally all of the backpacks of my Caradrons as well. And these have all been base coated using Retributor armour. And finally in the middle I have all of the weaponry, some of the details are going into the Gunstock Gun Hauler and also the actual main bodies of the Caradron Thunderers as well. And these have all been base coated using Lead Belcher. So as you can see, I now have all the base colours for all of my components achieved, which means I don't really have to worry about applying the large amounts of paints to the large areas. There's going to be a few areas I need to block in in the next few steps, but ultimately those starting colours have already been achieved very quickly and also very easily. With all of our base coats completed, we can now start working on painting in some of those details using our regular brush and regular paints. As you can see here, I'm painting in the figurehead on our Grunstock gun hauler using Retributor armour. And I'll be repeating this process using the brush on versions of the paints we've already base coated in to fill in those details on the other components and help to tie all these colours in together. And you can see here that I've been painting some of the silver metallic areas on our endron here using our lead belcher. Before moving on to painting all of those blue uniforms that our Caradron Overlords are wearing using the Fang. If you remember back to earlier on in this video, I did mention that this colour scheme also contains black, so we need to paint this on ourselves as there isn't really any components large enough to warrant using a spray paint on them. So we're going to be painting all these black areas, such as the leather belts and equipment pouches, using a bad and black. And so at this stage, all of your miniatures should have their base coats, and that is the most time-consuming step of painting achieved. And if you wanted to, you could leave your miniatures as they are now. They don't look um, fantastic, but they look serviceable. You have your base colours, and they you can tell what those colours should be. But with a few extra steps, by applying some washes, we can really help to enhance the details and make our miniatures look that much better. So I'm going to be starting things off by applying a wash of Agrax Earthshade over all the gold areas on this miniature. In addition to washing over the gold areas, I'll also be washing over the silver metallic areas and also the areas that we painted with the fang using a non oil wash. Now when you come to apply your wash to the areas that you've painted using the fang, I would recommend watering down your non-oil wash, roughly about one part water to one part wash. This will reduce the strength of the wash and help to prevent darkening down the blue colour too much. 
Additionally, when you come to apply your non-oil wash to the Grunstock Gun Hull's blue hull, I would instead use a focused wash instead of washing over the entire surface of the hull, instead focus it into those panel lines and also around those rivets. So this will give you a better looking detail overall. And as a final detail, I'll be painting in all the various lenses and optics that we have on our Arconaut helmet using Sybarite Green, which will contrast really nicely against the warm gold colour. And here we have the finished Arconauts. Now I've just quickly applied uh, some basing material here. I've just used some of Vallejo's basing gel and just to give it a quick dry brush with grey paint just to give us a different colour to contrast against the rest of the miniature and also allow us to apply that basing really quickly. And to recap, you want to choose a colour scheme which has as few paints as possible and also preferably paints which are available in a spray paint form as well. You then want to break down your components so they're ordered by colour, which means you can paint large areas very quickly with a spray paint, which cuts down time later on. And finally, you want to keep your colour scheme basic. Simply applying a base coat and a wash should suffice for most miniatures. Now, whilst the results of this technique won't win any awards, you will find that your miniatures can get from the box and onto the gaming table really quickly, and they'll look much better than if they were just bare grey plastic. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please do let us know in the comments below, and I'll also include a link to the Firesoul Games web store in the description as well, which you can find all of the components and tools and paints that I've used in this video. And so I just want to finish off by saying a big thank you for tuning in to watch this video, and we hope to see you again on Firestorm Games.